one more, let's go. I just say to myself, as long as you're enjoying it, as long as you're enjoying it and you can commit 100%, and if you can commit 100%, I know I can do really well. So yeah, I think this is, that's the important thing for me. I just try and enjoy it. And I think our training group and with my coach, you know, we take things very seriously, but also we're quite relaxed and things. You know, we have a bit of a laugh and warm up and just take things, yeah. So you can, can enjoy the sport. And then when it comes down to being serious and competing, then, then we do kind of flip that switch. But yeah, I've always just really enjoyed it. And if I know of, I do that, I can commit 100% to it and, and do the best I can. She came to university in Glasgow, where at the time I was coaching the university, autumn of 2012, when she was basically just a, a club runner, a good club runner, or maybe marginally better. Uh, and very quickly we managed to progress. I think within three months she was in four months she was got her first GB vest which basically preceded or before she'd even got her first Scotland vest so she went to European cross country and then since then it's just been sort of a upward trajectory of success we've gone championship to championship to championship Laura's got faster and faster and faster yeah, across multiple disciplines so yeah it's been a, a very enjoyable journey. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Uh, I think that's really true. Like so many people, uh, the dropout rate in athletics is huge. And I think kids, once they get to a certain age, like other distractions and stuff come up. So I think that if you stick at something and you, and you really have a passion for it and you work hard, then you do have to be patient, but the results will come. And what you put in is what you get out in athletics. So, so I used to play a lot of football for uh, school and for a local team. Um, and I used to do cross country club once a week at school and um, I used to play uh, centre midfield and I was running up and down the pitch and that's kind of where I found uh, my talent really and I got entered into a local, my local area schools cross country race and I remember I was wearing um, my football boots and I had elastic bands tied around my football boots and I, I, I won the race and um, one of the coaches from the local athletics club came up to me after the race and he said how would you like to travel the world and get paid for it which I, I thought was kind of weird at the time looking back um, it's kind of weird to be saying to a, like a 12 year old um, but now looking back like from there that's kind of where when I started because I then joined the athletics club and um, yeah never looked back really. I started running when I was about 11 years old. Um, I was just kind of running kind of school cross country races. I was doing okay, I wasn't winning anything, but I just really enjoyed the sport. And then um, one of my friends went to a local athletics club, so I just joined her and um, met a coach there. And yeah, just sort of trained in that, that environment for the best part of seven years until I went to university. And then when I went to university, I, I met the coach I've got now and everything kind of changed. I was kind of doing different sessions, completely kind of different setup. and. I just, within two months, had my first GB cap, so. It's been a, a bit of a challenge for us this past six years, since Laura came to, to university and started breaking onto the international scene. Uh, also, she was combining her vet studies with being you know, one of the top runners in the world, uh, when both are almost sort of full-time careers in themselves, trying to achieve these things. So, yeah, we've had to plan a long time in advance, look at things carefully, but that's her graduating now and we've managed to keep her at the very top of world running. 
these past few years, so I think I can call it success. Yeah, it's just kind of been since since changing coach and since changing my whole kind of environment and going to university that everything's just kind of been a been upward upward trajectory. But uh, but no, it's been great. top six in the year group went to like the cross-country district schools so I went to that and then my first coach Mick was at that race and he came up to me at the end I didn't win I was like 16th and he said oh I think you could be a good runner do you run for a club and I was like no don't run at all like it's my first race ever and he was like oh come along to my club and see if you like it and I did about a year later I started racing for the club and I guess when I started racing, I was like seeing how training hard, you got better in a race. So then I'd go to training like three times a week instead of once, and then I'd get better in the race. Yeah, I think at nationals, I came 60th or something. And then the year after I was 30th, and then the year after I won. So it took me like a while to actually be winning anything really. It was about five years, but yeah, I just kind of really liked it. <laughs> and then haven't stopped running really since then. Started when I was young in primary school. Um, there was, a local, there was a local race going on and our school had a few entrants so we put a little um, trial on as such. Um, who could run around the field the quickest, a couple of laps I believe it was. I won a trial event and then that took off, it inspired me and I was really enjoying it and then I asked my parents to do a little research on local clubs and who I could join at my age being 11. Um, and the one club I joined, Richmond and Zetland Harriers, I'm still a member of today so I was quite active when I was young always wanted to be outside playing around but yeah my main focus was on running and I also played football at a good level too so I was playing for Leeds Academy when I was younger in a development squad there um, and I was playing that until I was 15 16 years old and then after a couple of injuries um, really had to focus on what I wanted to do for the rest of my career and here I am today I think I picked the right sport so <laughs> So we're here in St Mert's Training Altitude, um, it's just a really good sort of base camp for altitude training, we're about 1800 metres and just with being up high you've got that less oxygen, you've got to work that a little bit harder and this gets you really fit so yeah it's a lovely atmosphere out here and um, you know great climate, great trails, great tracks so um, yeah all the athletes really enjoy it. So everyone reacts to altitude differently so you have to take the stimulus of altitude into consideration when you're doing your sessions so that's with recovery as well as uh, the actual set paces and stuff like that. So if you do a session with a minute recovery here, it might be the, the equivalent of doing 45 second recovery at sea level. It takes its toll on its body, but the performance benefits are, are big. So um, part of the British team, we're looking to do really well and pick up some medals in Berlin. Being up at altitude, what we do is just make sure that the athletes are looking after themselves in terms of wellness monitoring. Um, but also getting the most from the environment. So how they're training, how intense they're doing their workouts and just making sure that they're getting everything that they can from their training, making the most of being up at altitude so the oxygen is a little bit less up here. So tailoring their workouts to make sure that they're not only optimizing their training but getting the most from it and then recovering afterwards as well. It's one of the factors that we do look at. It's not the only thing, um, but it's one of the, the key drivers from endurance performance. When you go to altitude, the lower level of oxygen just drives an increase in red blood cells and that takes down to performance when you return to sea level. Because we've got our, our medical team are here as well, so we can really look after the athletes. You know, so if they're sore, they can get seen straight away and get some treatment, and we can keep on top of, of all of that. So I think. I think that's a big, a big factor that we're here as a, as a team and support rather than just being packed off to go, oh, go and run around up a mountain and see what happens. What people don't realise is up at altitude with the little oxygen, it just takes that little longer for your body to recover for these normal sessions I am doing and the training hasn't changed so much than what I would do at sea level, but you don't sleep as well up here not as good quality sleep equals diminished recovery so you need to be on top of your supplements and make sure you're 
doing all the right strength things, rehab, stretching and stuff just to take care of those things. As a physio, our key role here is to make sure all our athletes continue to stay injury free. Um, I think part of the, the beauty of being out on camp with F1 is that we can monitor F1 on a daily basis. So it does mean that we get a, a luxury of as soon as any little niggle arises or any little worry from any one of the athletes, we can check on that straight away and ensure that it doesn't amount to anything. Technology has allowed us just to make as good of decisions as possible up here. It's a real privilege to be in this role. You know, you're helping some of the best athletes in the world to try and achieve their dreams. Um, it's uh, it's completely different sort of um, working as a physiotherapist on a on an elite camp than it can be uh, you know in a clinic or in a hospital. Uh, you've got to sort of be ready for anything and keep a cool head and uh, yeah, there's a lot of problem solving. But it's also good fun. You're part of a family and yeah, it's a really enjoyable job. To get better, you've got to train with better people and you surround yourself with like-minded people as well because what we do isn't easy and there are a lot of distractions and stuff. I've been fortunate enough to train in Kenya and Ethiopia to kind of see what those guys get up to and they literally run, eat, sleep. So if we want to beat them, then kind of we have to adopt that lifestyle as it were and training methods have changed and we've got the benefits of sports science and stuff like that. So I think it's important to kind of not leave any stone unturned in terms of like training methods and stuff and that's why we're up here doing the altitude training because that's one of the reasons why the, the Kenyans are so good. Being part of the British team is great because everyone has the same goal and we're all training really hard together to try and get our best results. Yeah it was great you know to, to be part of that team and there were so many kind of the big stars in the team that I'd kind of seen on TV and everything and I couldn't believe I was kind of alongside them now and um, yeah, I just kind of learned so much from them and just kind of took it to the next championship and then thereafter and thereafter and now I find myself as one of the more experienced athletes now and it's, um, yeah, I just hope I can kind of help the youngsters that are coming onto the team now. Mo Farah back then was a big inspiration of mine, still is today with his incredible achievements. I really looked up to him and what he was doing and that's the way I want to go. I want to be just as good as he was or still is even. Being around athletes like Mo and stuff, like to see the work rate that's required to kind of be the best in the world I and mean, that's been invaluable for me and um, yeah hopefully I'll be able to step up and start winning some medals now myself. Nice. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And what you put in is what you get out in athletics.